Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. This is Algebra 1, Lesson 5, and this lesson covers sets, absolute value, and addition of sign numbers. All right. To designate a set, we enclose the numbers of the set in braces. So super easy. These are just like curly brackets, braces. They're like curly Q um, um, parentheses. All right. So the set, set A, this says set A contains the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Easy peasy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or we could say set A contains the counting numbers 1 through 5. Both of those mean the same thing. So that part's pretty easy. Remember that we call the counting numbers natural numbers. Okay, so counting numbers are natural numbers. So if we wanted to designate the set of natural numbers, we're going to say our curly Q bracket, and then we're going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then that dot, dot, dot means keep going on and forever into infinity, right? Keep going that way forever. Okay, that's our natural numbers. If we include 0, we have designated the whole numbers. So that's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, 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 dot, dot, dot. Okay, on forever. If we include the list of the negative of every member of the set of natural numbers, so basically all your negative numbers, that's going to be your integers. So integers include your negatives. Okay, so it's going to be your whole numbers and your negatives and zero. So negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, and you draw it just like that. It will ask you to designate these sets on your homework. So just remember, natural numbers are counting numbers. Whole numbers, you add zero to it. Integers, you add your negatives. Absolute value. Absolute value is the distance between two numbers on a number line. Absolute, absolute value is always positive. Basically, it's just asking us how far we are from zero. So if we have a number line, right, and we have the absolute value of zero, I need to make it longer than that. These are all negatives. Oh, I forgot. One and two. Whoopsie. Anyways, I'm not. I'm actually not even going to do that because I have a number line already made on another page. All right, so the absolute value of set positive 7 is 7. The absolute value of negative 7 is 7. Basically, all you do is you just drop the negative sign, okay? So it's always positive. So if we have the absolute value of negative 5, that's going to be positive 5. The absolute value of 11 minus 2, well, 11 minus 2 would be 9. So that is 9. All right, if the negative sign is on the outside, first we solve what's inside of here. So we're going to say negative, and then 20 take away 2 would be 18, right? So that's going to equal inside of here would be positive 18, but we still have this negative sign that was on the outside. So that's going to equal negative 18. It means the opposite of the absolute value of 20 minus 2. Okay. All right, so when we add numbers on a number line, we can use the number line to, for adding numbers. So this first one is 3 and negative 5. We have to add those together. So we're going to start at 3, positive 3, and then we're going to go negative 5. So if we go negative 5, that means we have to go backwards 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we're going to end there. So we got positive 3 minus 5 takes us to negative 2. So if we added positive 3 plus negative 5, right, we're going to get negative 2. Another way to write that would be 3 minus 5. A different way to think about this, other than a number line, is just think about it like money. I have $3. I spend $5. How much did I need to borrow from my mom? Well, I had to borrow $2. Okay. So just think about it like credits and debits. All right, this one's negative 5 and positive 3. So we could start at negative 5. And we want to go positive 3 spaces. So we're going to go to the right. 1, 2, 3. And we're going to end up at negative 2. So if we have positive 5. Wait, no, it's negative 5. Let's see. Let me zoom out a little. Negative 5 and positive 3. Negative 5 
positive 3. Okay, this means we owe our mom $5. We pay back 3 of it. How much do we still owe? We still owe $2. Okay. It's the space between these numbers that we're counting. Or the easiest way to think about it is like money. All right, commutative property of addition. It says the order in which real numbers are added does not affect the sum. So we can add numbers in any order, and it won't affect what the answer is. So if I had, for example, 3 plus 6 plus 8, I can add my 3 and my 6 and get a 9 plus 8, and 8, 16, that'd be 17. Or if I had 3 plus 6 plus 8, I can add my 6 and 8 first is 14 plus 3, and I'm still going to get 17, okay? So it doesn't matter what order you add in, you are always going to get the same number. That's why if I have a big list of numbers, I like to come up with the ones that equal 10 first um, because they are easier to deal with. So let's say that I had a big list of numbers like 8, 4, 7, 2, 3, 5, 6. I'm going to find all my 10s first. So I know 6 and 4 is 10, and then 8 and 2 is another 10, so that makes 20, and 7 and 3 is another 10, so that makes 30, and then I'm left with a 5, so that makes 35. So easy to count that way um, compared to the like 8 and 4 and then add 7 and then add 2. It's much easier to do it that way. Okay, so you can add it in any any order and you're still going to get the same amount. Okay, these are going to be super easy if you think about it like money. We've got 2 plus 1. Positive 2 plus 1. Positive 2, positive 1. We've got $2, we get one more dollar, now we have $3. Answer is positive 3. This one is negative 2 and negative 1. All right, so negative 2, negative 1. That means you could write it like that. You could write negative 2 plus negative 1. It really means the same thing. It just means you have a negative 2 and you have a negative 1. This means you owe $2 and then you borrow a dollar more. Now you owe your mom $3. Easy peasy, negative 3. All right, we can add these in any order. So I'm going to put my negatives together first. Negative 4 and negative 1 are going to make negative 5. I owe $4. I borrow another dollar. Now I owe 5. I pay back $2, and then I pay back another $5. 2 and 5 is positive 7. So now do I owe anything? No, I'm going to have $2, right? 7 minus, you could write that as 7 minus 5 equals 2. And that makes a lot more sense because that's what we're used to seeing. This means you owe $5, you pay back 7, you're going to have 2 left. All right, pause the video and work to practice problems, and then I'll work them for you. This is a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. Hopefully you pause the video to work these practice problems. Let's see, I think I'm going to go with this bright color. All right, absolute value of negative 4 is going to be, just drop that negative sign, positive 4. Easy peasy. Absolute value of 4.2, there is no negative sign to drop, so it's just going to be 4.2. Okay, the next one, C, We have to try to work this one out. So first I'm going to do put my negative there. Now I'm going to say 10 take away 6. That will be 4. Okay. So then this negative still stays on there. Once I get the absolute value of 4 is 4, then I have negative 4. All right. Um, next one. All right. Negative 4 plus or negative 14 plus 6. That means I owe $14. I pay back 6 of it. So what's 14 take away 6 would be 8, and that will be negative 8. Okay, so I've got to bring down this negative sign first. Then inside my absolute value, I'm going to have my negative 8. Okay, then when I get rid of the absolute value sign, it gets rid of that negative, but I'm still left with that one. So I have negative 8 as the answer to that one. Okay, so negative 8 for that one. 
Um, these are super easy. It tells you to make a number line and draw all the little arrows and whatnot. You don't have to do that. 3 plus 2 is 5. Um, negative 3 plus 2, that means I owe $3. I pay back 2 of it. I'm going to have negative 1. I'm still going to owe a dollar. Okay. This one I'm going to find all my negatives and my positives and put them together. So I've got negative 5 and negative 3. That means I owe five dollars and I borrow three more. Now I owe eight. Okay, and then I have positive two, positive three, which would be five. Okay, so if I owe eight dollars and I pay back five of it, I'm still going to owe three dollars. All right. So the easiest way to think about negatives and positives and adding and subtracting them is going to be like money. Just think about it like money. Your negatives are what you owe, and your positives are what you earn. All right, and that is it for this lesson. I hope everything made sense to you. Thanks for watching.